today I will be doing a 60-10, 70-18 at 6G position. I like to have a 332 landing as you can see. I also like to use a blade as a spacer. So if whenever I do my uh, attacks, that's what I use. I like to use two tacks as y'all know, one at 12 and one at 6. And I also go with the bigger gap, that's where I decide where I start at. I'm running 60-10 with the 1 8 rod at 80 amps. I don't have a remote at the moment, so I'll try to keep it at 80, but we'll adjust the machine as I go. When you do your root, you want to make sure your rod is right in between the gap that is catching the bottom and the top wall the same. You don't want to have it inclined too much to the top or in too much to the bottom because your root will be too heavy if you do that or it will look uneven. As you can see right here, the flame started to push out because I need more heat. The gap is closing up on me as you can see, so I decided to turn it up five more. Whenever you do your tying, a good tip is to use two fingers to keep it steady because sometimes you do have to whip it back in if the keyhole gets too big and having two fingers on the rod will help you out a lot. My left side is done. My right side's gap is a little closed up so I decided to do 90 amps on this side. When I do 60-10, like I said, I use a saw blade as a spacer. Usually, if the gap looks like a blade could easily fit in there, I'll start at 80 amps. Now, that's how it was for my left side. When I jumped into the right side, like y'all saw, it was a little bit tighter. And if your blade cannot fit in that gap, it's a good indication that you need to crank it up. And I like to use 90 amps. So basically, make sure to know your gap sizes. If the blade is loose, start at 80. If it's a tighter gap where the blade cannot fit in there, uh, maybe you should decide to crank it up 10 to about 90. I started doing my hot pass. I like to run my hot pass at 105. Whenever you do your hot pass, a good method that I like to use is to do O's over overlapping each other, kind of like the Audi symbol. Make sure you to hit the top and the bottom wall. I like to pause at the top wall for like a second. And whenever I come down, I just like to come straight up so I don't pause at the bottom because you are playing with gravity since you are at 45 degrees. Finished my hot pass on my right side. Now, if you see on my left side, I still haven't grinded that bead because I wanted to show y'all a quick tip on how to grind, something that will help you out a lot. Whenever you grind, make sure your disc is at an angle, like 45 angle, like I have it right there, till you can hit the top and the bottom wall to open it up some more. You want to have that bevel opened up so whenever you put your hot pass, it feeds right in there and you don't have no issues of lack of fusion and it will help you out a lot. This is the inside arc shot of the high pass. I'm still running at 105 amps. Whenever you do your high pass, this is the kind of color that you want to get, a nice cherry red. If your hot pass does not look something to this, it means you are running too cold and you need to crank it up some more. Another good tip when you are welding is to be comfortable. I'm right-handed, so I like to put my left elbow on the pipe to help me be steady if you are left-handed it would just be the opposite way but that helps you out a lot so make sure you are always comfortable and you are steady as possible whenever you do the high pass at the bottom you really do not do o's you kind of do like u's in the horseshoe method but uh, it's a simple method still 105 amps
here's the hot pads this is what you want it to look like i'm gonna go ahead and do another 60 10 fill on there you can do 70 18 but i prefer to do 60 10. i'm gonna go up five to make it 110 amps for the last fill when you're welding you always want to be comfortable i went and got a chain clamp to help me out because the pipe got too hot so make sure to have anything from a crescent wrench to a chain clamp anything that can help you be comfortable when welding I started the cap right here. Whenever you start capping, whenever you strike it off, you start, you drag it down, then you come back up. By doing this method, you will avoid getting porosity and you will burn through all the trash. I'm doing a two stringer bead. So whenever you do your two stringers, your first stringer should only cover half of your fill. You do not want to go too wide. Just keep it about halfway through, just how I'm doing on the video. Like I've been saying, you always want to be comfortable. I have my left on the pipe to try to help me stay steady when I'm capping. Whenever you start capping, you want to run that rod as far as you can without stopping. So make sure you do some drive runs as I'm doing to help you out. Whenever you cap in with 332, a good tip is to use two fingers to keep that rod steady. You always want to find the right angle to get comfortable and be able to see so you can burn a nice cap on there. Here's the finished product. Like I said, I did a two string bead on here. Make sure you have no arc marks and make sure you do not have any undercut. If you followed everything I showed you on here, you should be okay. I hope you enjoyed the video. If y'all have any questions or comments, drop the comment below or send me a message on Instagram. I'll be glad to help you out. Thanks for watching. See y'all next time.